It's this weird video released by this by Gazprom, state-controlled Gazprom, and it's this really creepy video that shows Europe freezing over after Moscow switches off the gas. Now, some leaders in Europe are saying this is basically like a blackmail video. And it shows a worker turning off the supplies and then very dramatically, the gas pressure needle falls to zero. Icy clouds ominously creep across the screen and there's all of these aerial shots of Brussels and Berlin and Paris and London. And then you have this like creepy song. It's called Winter Will Be Long. It's some like traditional, I don't know. It's like the Sarah McLaughlin sad animal song that plays over this. It's creepy. And what is the point of releasing this now? Right after they conveniently turned off energy in Nord Stream 1 because, you know, turbine issues, but nobody believes it. Welcome back to the program. Dana Lash here with you this Tuesday, bottom of our third hour. Joining us now, Stephen Yates. You can find him on Twitter, at YatesComs. He's the senior fellow at the America First Policy Institute and the chair of the China Policy Initiative. Stephen, always good to see you live from your Lego bunker. Before we talk about things in the Pacific, this was a, I mean, it's Russian propaganda, but this comes right as they, oh, there's a turbine issue. We're going to have to turn gas supplies off through Nord Stream 1. It seems as though everything that, that normal people with more than one brain cell to rub together said about Russia weaponizing energy supplies a year ago, two years ago, longer than that, it's now coming true because Europe's facing a gas, an energy crisis going into winter. I don't know how they're going to get out of this, especially because the U.S., we talked about this last week. We are not in a position to help them. So what are they going to do? Yeah, well, it's also another reminder that the bad guys of the world are basically saying the quiet parts out loud. There's nothing subtle about this at all. They obviously have been thinking about this for a while, put some of their odd polish onto this uh, production they put put out there. Uh, but, you know, we had our own version of that. We've had a president of the United States speaking live from the gates of hell. And now we have this video telling Europe that they're about to freeze to death. So, you know, it's it's quite the international propaganda week we've gone through. That's a great point. And obviously, Yates is, is Steve's referencing the whole I've never seen, you know, Independence Hall lit that way, but that weird speech that Biden gave. And to that point, Steve, you would think because this news was known about Europe yeah. and the energy crisis when the president gave his everybody who is MAGA and disagrees with me is a threat speech. Didn't mention that at all. That was kind of weird, right? Primetime address, not even bringing that up. It just was a campaign speech. Really, I mean, if one wanted to say fascistic. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's one, another one of those unprecedented things. It used to be through the entire Obama tenure, everything was unprecedented. But I think Joe is showing there are places that presidents can still go. They never have before because they never should have. But he's still finding places to go and, uh, you know, kind of tear the part, tear the country apart. Uh, it's just unbelievable to try to talk about anything as being the biggest threat to our democracy or the country and then turn inward. I mean, they've done this with climate change. They did it over supposed white supremacy. Uh, and now it's sort of MAGA Republicans, whatever, whatever they mean by that. And apparently the president couldn't remember for more than 24 hours yeah. what he meant by that. Yeah, he. Uh, but. These are the black. biggest threats when the reality is, yeah, the Russians are bad dudes and they're 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 making videos about being bad dudes. The Chinese are bigger bad dudes right. and they're also making videos and war machines to go with it. To, and to that point, talking with Steve Yates uh, at Yates comes on Twitter, I would imagine that these all of these these tyrants of the world are very glad that Biden is focusing on anything domestic and petty political power jockeying over any of these issues. But I, I was kind of wondering what when you have actual political tyrants, people like Vladimir Putin, people like Xi Jinping, when they see somebody like Joe Biden, as you said, staging himself before the, uh, you know, what it looked like gates of hell, giving this really bizarre speech. It's I, I mean, what do they make of that? I mean, I, what, what do you think their response was to that kind of display? 
Well, I think on one level, they're exceedingly jealous. Why didn't I think of giving a speech like this? I am the bad guy. I'm the baddest of bad guys. How did he beat me to this video moment? Uh, and who knows? Coming soon to a theater near you, Vladimir Putin may do his version and Xi Jinping, after he ekes by his Communist Party election this fall, maybe he will produce this kind of thing. But a part of it, they have to sit back and go, wow, never thought that America was going to be outdoing us on this deep, dark propaganda stuff. But hey, apparently the Americans got game in this area now. Yeah, and, and, and at least they're not focusing on us. This One of the headlines, too, while Russia is shutting down Nord Stream 1, uh, there's also the, the story of OPEC now reducing their, their, what their, their output because prices, you know, thankfully, we're all happy that prices kind of decreased a little bit. They're still a lot higher. Uh, this is, I'm just like, this is just setting up an even greater power struggle. And I just feel we are, are stuck in the middle of all of this. Not, I mean, on purpose, we're stuck in the middle of all of this. But how does this position China? Because I know China is trying to be a, a real player on this stage as well. Uh, talk to, give us a little bit of insight on this uh, at, at, as we are going into winter and everybody's apparently going to freeze to death. Yeah, well, just adding to the good news, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the global climate agenda, sometimes we call it the Church of the Sun God. Yeah. They, uh, they're out there trying to make it so that not only are we supposed to move away from the resources that the creator gave us to use responsibly for uh, the purposes of bettering mankind and helping produce good things for more people, feeding more people, all of that good stuff. But instead of doing that for ourselves, we're now going to need to import more. And where are we gonna import from? We're gonna import from some of the least responsible countries on the in the world. Mm. Uh, and so whether it's your solar panels or any kind of manufactured good, we know now with absolute certainty that quality control is a massive problem in China. So things yeah. will be more expensive, less quality control, might even be made by genocidal slave regimes. We don't know. Uh, and so uh, this there's there's a push in that regard. But in terms of the pinch on everyone, demand from China for energy is going to keep going up. And that's going to keep uh, kind of pulling supply to them, making things more expensive for us. Uh, and if we're going to take ourselves out of gas and nuclear and other areas, guess what? China's not. Mm -hmm. They're going full bore in all of these areas. Uh, and so we're going to be losing competitive edge on manufacturing and running these kinds of capabilities. And they're going to become the world's most important purchaser of these kinds of things. And so we're, it, we just made this decision to take ourselves out of the driver's seat of this market. And all the American families, workers and manufacturers are going to pay a dear price for that. I saw we're talking with Steve Yates. Uh, I, I, I saw this video. They, they started circulating on the uh, Chinese social media version, I guess, of Twitter. And after they announced another another lockdown in China, people began brawling, crawling all over themselves at supermarkets. It was a city of 21 million people, Chengdu. And apparently the measures, they're in lockdown. Only one resident per household can go out apparently for like a, an appointed period to get supplies. That's even if they have anything. And they said that the decision was made after they had 157 new coronavirus cases, 51 of which were asymptomatic. And so people went nuts, fighting with yeah. each other in the store, racing out to the streets. Apparently, and it wasn't just that store. It was everywhere. They cannot keep doing this realistically, can they? How many lockdowns is this that they've gone that they've gone to? Well, way more than we know, because we don't have a universal free press coverage yeah. throughout China. Uh, but there's a lot of video that's going going out there. If you ever want to see something truly uh, shocking and remarkable, watch one of the exit videos when there's an early warning of a coronavirus positive case. And you'll see thousands of people fleeing for their lives out of a building before they get caught in lockdown. People have been locked down so much that they literally run for their lives so that they don't get caught in another lockdown bubble. Uh, it's absolute insanity. This COVID zero policy is one of the most radical and weird things. And the, weird, the weirdest part of it is 
The virus came from China. Hmm. One of the vaccines that was uh, advertised and flacked relentlessly for the first year and a half uh, came out of China. And yet China is destroying itself right now with COVID. Yes. And and these lockdowns, They, I was looking at, a, there are two different pieces. It seems to be like there's two different uh, thought paths here that, uh, you know, China's economy, and we've talked about this before, they're dealing with a lot of debt. Uh, their housing market's obviously really, really weird. But then at the same time, I was looking at Real Clear Markets, and it's it said China's no longer poor because it stopped doing stupid things. Well, I'm looking at locking down cities of 21 million yeah. people as it's still doing stupid things. So I know their their little stimulus thing didn't work. When we, we went into one lockdown that, I mean, it was still pretty ridiculous and still pretty strict, but comparing it to the communist Chinese, it it was not near that. I just don't understand how their economy can keep moving forward because this isn't just one city. It'll be a number of cities. I mean, didn't Shanghai just come out of another lockdown like last month? Yeah. How, so how is their economy not, how are they not totally entirely destroyed right now? Well, number one, they are able to lie. <laughs> and so they, and they don't have any kind of accountability. And so it's a, a little easier to get by if you have established very firmly the reputation for cracking the skulls of anyone who yeah. wants to ask tough questions at a press briefing. Uh, and so they, they have certain built in uh, insulation against this uh, against pushback on these things but it's not infinite uh, it's extremely hard to predict when things will reach a meaningful tipping point but they've been playing with fire in a number of different ways I mean demographics is kind of uh, an SAT buzzword but basically numbers are not their friend they had a big growing population until about a generation ago and now they they, they have a population that is shrinking mm -hmm. uh, their economy, was was high on the money that was getting thrown into it by uh, by the U.S. by multilateral development yeah. organizations. Everything when you have trillions of dollars just flowing in, you can't make mistakes because the money just washes right over the mistakes. Uh, but now that has started to slow down. These other kinds of lockdown policies are going to have an effect, and the supply chains around the world it's slow and it needs to have happen much much faster now. But the supply chains are going to start changing to where China is not as dominant as it has been. It's going to take a while to come down from that high, but all these things are going to put pressure. At what point does it break that form of government? We can't say. Uh, but I, you know, you sort of have an intuitive feel that when we were going through the 1980s, something was about to give in the broader Soviet experience. Yeah. And with the broader Chinese communist experience, you sort of think, you know, the high of all their predictions that they're going to overtake us and dominate us, that's kind of moved to the rear view window. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're out of the woods on problems. We've talked many, many times. A faltering China is still a very dangerous mm -hmm. China. They have nukes. They have lots of angry, militarized people. That could all go sideways. And they have proven an ability to release viruses that are a problem. Yeah. Uh, so we have things to watch out for, but uh, it's definitely on shaky ground. It's something that's gonna affect every American's life from our shelves in a Walmart, to the fuel in our pumps, to the investments that have been made with your pensions mm -hmm. or mutual funds. All of this is linked in, in ways the Soviet Union never was. And so we, have, we need leadership now. Unfortunately, we have an angry man in the White House and other people focused on climate and genders I didn't know existed. Uh, but uh, this is a really big, big yeah. challenge worthy of real leaders happening right now, coming from China. I, maybe we should start calling them MAGA to get the administration to pay attention to it. Exactly. Then they'll care. Yeah, then they'll care. Stephen Yates at Yates Comms on Twitter. Always so good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much for your expertise this week. Have a great rest of your week. Thank you, Dana. Take Thank care. You.